Ah, da. Die blinkt nämlich nicht. Okay. Welcome back, everyone. We are happy to start a new keynote. Um, as Thomas Arnold introduced to you, we will jump now to the Asian context and talk about synodality within the Asian continent. And we are very happy to now present to you Antonio Ledesma from the Philippines. Hello, Father Ledesma. A, a greeting to all my friends and uh, I'm glad to be here with you. I am Archbishop Emeritus uh, Antonio Ledesma from the Philippines. And I would like to share with you our experiences, starting with the Federation of Asian Bishops Conference of the Philippines. I am glad to share with you the topic on synodality in Asian cities, challenges for FABC at 50 or 50 years anniversary. We can start with the Asian context. 60% of the world's population live in Asia. And in fact, we Asian population live on only one third of the world's land area. And it is also the origin of world religions, Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianity, and Islam. Overall, there's a sense of the divine in Asian societies, such as prayer, meditation, a sense of harmony among Buddhists and Hindus that is palpable, and also among Muslims and Christians. But there is also discrimination, prejudices, violence, and conflict in various parts of Asia. The church in the Asian context we are mostly a minority church in most of the countries, but united with the universal church. There is also the history of a colonial church brought in by missionaries from Spain, France, England, and so on. But now, for the most part, there is a native clergy and hierarchy and all established in independent countries. So the Federation of Asian Conferences, or FABC, is an association of the different bishops' conferences all over Asia, created in 1970 during the visit of St. Paul VI in Manila. There are four regions covered, East, Southeast, South, and Central Asia. And actually, two years ago was the 50th anniversary of FABC. But because of the pandemic, it is only this coming October that we will be celebrating the golden anniversary of FABC. This is a picture of the whole of Asia. On the other hand, this is the membership of the conferences in East Asia, South Korea, Japan, Southeast Asia, Philippines, Indonesia, South Asia, India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, and also there are affiliate or associate country uh, conferences, Central the Bishop's Conference in Central Asia, the groups all of these uh, new countries from Kazakhstan to Uzbekistan. And these are some of the national flags of the FABC uh, Bishop's Conferences in various countries. So the offices themselves of FABC are, there are nine of them. Uh, the Office on Evangelization, Theological Concerns, Ecumenism and Interreligious Dialogue, Human Development and Climate Change, Social Communication, Education and Faith Formation, Laity and Family, Clergy, Consecrated Life. All of these offices, in a sense, are also involved in the synodal process especially in the centers of the country, the large cities, and also in our parishes and mission area. So first we can in general talk about the synodal church. It's a church which listens, which realizes that listening is more than simply hearing. It is a mutual listening in which everyone has something to learn. And I think this is the attitude of uh, mission churches in Asia. The objectives of FABC 50 to affirm the journey of the past 50 years 
This is correlated with the uh, Matthean Gospel passage of the coming of the Magi from the East to pay their homage to the King of Peace, the Prince of Peace in Jerusalem, in uh, Bethlehem. Secondly, to address emerging challenges confronting Asia and the church, to search for the face of Jesus in Asia, also to trace a vision of the church in Asia at the service of the peoples of Asia, and finally to envision new pathways of service and journeying together as peoples of Asia. So the images of a synodal church like a tent of meeting in which the Ark of the Covenant is preserved, and that is the meaning of this gathering now, the General Assembly to be held in Bangkok in mid-October up to the end of the month, and we expect about a uh, number of 200, about 250 bishops and uh, lay workers, secretaries of the various FABC offices, and the description itself, a dynamic church in movement which accompanies while yearning strengthened by many charisms and ministry. Thus does God make himself present in this world. And hopefully this is also the image we would like to see in the FABC General Assembly. There are five emerging realities I would like to share with you, following perhaps the what we call now the synodal process. There are many more actually that are enumerated in the preliminary document of FABC, but I thought these five emerging realities can already give us an idea of where the churches in Asia are going. The first emerging issue, which is already here actually, is the global pandemic. The health crisis brought about by COVID-19, the experience in many countries of a lack of facilities, the lockdowns, the travel restrictions, the quarantines, the vaccination uh, drive, and also the lack of equity of access, especially most of the services in the large cities, but the rural areas still are waiting. There is also the slowdown of the economy because of the pandemic, bringing about unemployment, closure of shops, schools, and offices. And there was a marked fall, however, in pollution levels in the environment, which was a positive sign that we were actually able to make sure that the uh, environment itself uh, recovers its uh, full, pristine uh, nature. What were some of the church responses to the pandemic? Well, we started with online workshop ser workshop services. We also engaged in emergency food aid together with governments and other non-government organizations. But one interesting aspect was the experience in the Philippines. Uh, an individual housewife just uh, put out a community pantry outside her uh, yard and put a sign there that whatever, take only what you need and also uh, give whatever you can afford. And that community pantry started to be replicated in many parts of the country. That uh, here, uh, anyone can get some uh, needed food that they needed, but uh, they some were also contributing to the community pantry. And it was really an exercise, I think, of solidarity and again, participation, where people can come together, uh, even those who you do not even know, but sharing the same goods and services. A second uh, emerging uh, reality and challenge for the churches of Asia would be the climate crisis, which again is still very much with us. Natural disasters like the typhoons in the Philippines, especially Typhoon Yolanda in Tacloba, uh, big flooding in Pakistan only a few months ago, landslides, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions in Indonesia, and several others. There is also the challenge of deforestation and mining concerns that have destroyed the environment. And again, the ever-present pollution now of air, water, and soil. So the climate crisis is very much with us also as in other parts of the world. 
Again, some church response would be to engage in the Laudato Si movement, the season of creation at this time from September 1 to October 4, the feast day of St. Francis of Assisi. There are now many efforts to move into sustainable agriculture or organic farming methods. There's also the shift to solar energy versus especially coal-fired power plants. And also now technology transfer like for solid waste management and also the discouragement of the use of plastics. So again, this is together with many other civil society organizations. A third emerging uh, reality is the growing urbanization and urban poverty. Half of Asia's population today live in cities. There is also a widening gap between the rich and the poor within the cities. And there is the housing needs, the uh, existence of slums, the problems of water and sanitation, health facilities, the rise of criminality and drugs. There are also the population concerns where sometimes women are viewed as poor, powerless, and pregnant. So urbanization itself brings a lot of uh, beneficial effects for those who are looking for better education and health services. But on the other hand, there are also many who are living from day to day and with uh, not no stable employment at all. Again, the church's response would be in terms of social services, uh, clinics, schools, homes for the elderly or the disabled, also hospitals. We have parish level ministries for family life or counseling, basic ecclesial communities, catechesis, youth activities. During the time of the pandemic, there were also counseling uh, services made available for those who were depressed or affected by the uh, lockdown and lack of uh, financial support or employment. A fourth emerging concern is cultural transformation and peace building. Asia is the meeting ground of cultures. There is diversity and there is also the colonial culture background. We experience internal conflicts between ethnic groups, like perhaps what was happening with the Rohingya group in Myanmar. We have land disputes. You have development aggression of, of multinational corporations coming in. There are also external conflicts like boundary disputes on land or sea, like the claim of China to be uh, what we call the Chinese Sea, uh, affecting also the territorial claims of the Philippines, Malaysia, and Vietnam. And there's still also the existence of religious fundamentalism and violent extremism. In my place here in Mindanao, the Philippines, it was only recently that we had the signing of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region for Muslim Mindanao, which is a way of also giving autonomy to the Muslim communities in the island of Mindanao. So again, the church responds for peace building and dialogue is first interfaith dialogue. Again, in Mindanao, we had the Bishop's Lama Conference that in the past brought in Christian bishops together with Muslim ulama to talk about common efforts for peace and also common statements against any uh, outbreak of violence. We also encourage now ecumenical synodality through worship and also spiritual ecumenism. There are also mediation and reconciliation efforts where the church plays the role of a mediator to bring about reconciliation. And we have promoted Catholic social teaching on basic values for human dignity, human rights, and the common good. And now with Pax Christi International especially pushing also for nonviolence and just peace, following the, exam, the legacy of Gandhi in India, then we are also trying to bring about a new message for the peace building. The Pope's statement together with the uh, Muslim leader in Abu Dhabi 
of this latest encyclical on Fratelli Tutti are also encouragements for looking on the whole human family as uh, in terms of human fraternity under one God and working together while respecting various cultures and religious traditions. Finally, the fifth uh, emerging concern and ongoing concern is really family life and youth values. Uh, and I quote from Ecclesia in Asia, the people of Asia hold the family to be a source of strength, a closely knit community with a powerful sense of solidarity. Again, there are traditional values that uh, we promote, filial respect, care for the aged and the sick, the love of children and harmony, and this is uh, noticeable in all Asian religious traditions. But also, we worry about the plight of migrant workers, of refugees, of indigenous people or communities, and these are the ones oftentimes that are left behind. So again, the church response to family and youth values would be the significant role first of Catholic schools, particularly of religious congregations run by sisters and also brothers and other uh, congregations. The use now of radio and TV and social media. One ongoing uh, experience has Radio Veritas, which also has been going on for the past 50 years. And this was supported mostly by the German Conference of German Bishops through Missouri. And we also are trying to address current issues uh, on population control, divorce, gender roles, the death penalty, and the like. So family values and youth values are very much part of the challenge for the Christian church in Asia. In summary, then, some features of a single church would be to listen and dialogue, to be participatory, to be in communion, to be on mission, and to walk together. And this is part of the uh, Pope Francis' own uh, threefold focus on uh, communion, participation, and mission. What are then the images we could see of Jesus for Asia? Again, this is proposed in our coming assembly that let us look on Jesus as the Good Samaritan, caring for victims regardless of clan or culture. Jesus as the Good Shepherd that protects and proclaims the Beatitudes, offers mercy and compassion. Jesus also who gives women a special place in the history of salvation. And in a sense, uh, Mary's Magnificat would be expressive of that. Jesus as teacher and Lord, washing his disciples' feet, also teaching the love of enemies. Jesus with the disciples on the road to Emmaus, the synodal journey, uh, understanding scriptures, and the breaking of the bread at the end of this uh, pilgrimage. So, Finally, what is the image of the church in the Asian context? Well, the FABC bishops have mentioned that we promote, we try to promote a culture of dialogue, especially the triple dialogue with the poor, religions, and cultures, which from the very beginning of FABC in 1970 was already spelled out. But now we also add other dialogues with the youth, with women, also dialogue with regard to the environment and technology. We can call ourselves then a church of the young, a green church, a digital church, a synagogue church. Also the effort now to organize a community-based church where smaller basic official communities or basic human communities are gathered together. We can also say that the Asian church is a church of martyrs. There are many martyrs of Korea, of China, of Japan, of Vietnam. We have also two martyr saints from the Philippines. And there are other part, other countries that are now beginning to celebrate the beatification of their own martyrs. Finally, we can say that the churches of Asia are a missionary church. 
many countries in Asia are still in a pre-Christian, not post-Christian period. And that is part of the challenge of the mission in Asia. We are told that Christianity in Asia is only about uh, among six to eight percent of the total population. Half of that are, uh, or roughly three percent, I think, would be about Catholics. And half of the Catholics are really located in the Philippines and also perhaps now in East Timor. But that shows the minority image of the church in Asia, which nonetheless is called to be a missionary church. So finally, again, the image of the disciples in the road to Emmaus can be a way of depicting the journey of 50 years of the church in Asia. He walked with them, our Lord, their eyes were open, and also they set off without delay. And in that sense, we hope that for the next 50 years or more, the church, the conferences of bishops of the church in Asia will continue to be faithful to the mission and to sharing the faith with the countries of Asia. Thank you for your attention, my friends. Thank you very much, Father Ledesma, for your overview of the it's an order process with regard to the Asian context. And we actually have a question from Professor Thomas Söding just about this. Um, Professor Söding is asking, um, as you mentioned, Asia is a continent containing many different cultures and religions. So Professor Söding would be interested to hear from you. Who are your inspiring partners in order to discover the Catholic way of synodality, especially with regard to the Philippines? And he's asking which distinctions and profiles are necessary and also possible in the political, social, cultural and religious tensions of societies in which the Catholic Church also has to give a certain way of orientation. May you please help us to understand this context a bit better? In many ways, uh, I think the local churches here in the Philippines are, are continuing with youth activities, like there are also local youth days in the dioceses. And there are also efforts to include uh, everyone, not only Catholics, but in fact, there are also now youth camps uh, involving Christians and Muslims. And this is one way also to bring about interreligious dialogue among the younger people. Thank you very much, Father Ledesma. And also, yeah. Professor Söding was asking, um, what kind of orientation can the Catholic Church give um, with regard to the political, social, or cultural, also religious tensions in the different Asian um, countries? As you mentioned, in many countries besides the Philippines, the Catholic population or the Christian population is rather in the minority. There are also ethnic or religious conflicts. So what needs to be done um, from the Catholic side? to overcome these tensions? Well, in many ways, I think, uh, at least in the Philippines, uh, Catholics are also asked to be sensitive to the minority groups and to respect now the traditions, for instance, of the Muslims and also of indigenous people. And oftentimes there are now maybe uh, experiences of students being fielded also to help in the development of these areas. We have some volunteer programs that also try to uh, assign uh, young volunteers to, uh, for instance, teach in madrasa schools for the Muslims and also to help in rural development projects among small farmers. So these are all efforts also to show that uh, the majority Christian population are also trying to reach out to the minority groups. Yeah, thank you, 
Father Ledesma, I have uh, one last question because you referred to also the impact of colonialism, uh, especially with regard to the Philippines. And I was wondering, like, do you see also certain colonial continuities with regard um, to certain um, theological structures, which also need to be um, addressed to um, when we are meeting for the synodal process, um, like is there something what the global north, the church in the global north can maybe even learn from the Asian churches in the south? Um, like, do we have certain assets or cultural frameworks which might be also benefiting to the way how we understand theology and the joint process in the synodal church? Yeah, meeting for the synodal process. Um, like, is there something yes. of the global north, the church in the global north can maybe learn from the Asian churches in the south? Um, like, do I have certain assets or cultural frameworks which might be also benefiting to... Would you like me to repeat the question? And the joint process in the Spanish church. Um, the well, uh, the 300 years of Spanish colonial uh, rule in the Philippines, has left uh, a legacy of, you might say, Christianization. And although we are independent now, there's still a lot of influence of Spanish uh, Catholicism in the Philippines. We have our fiestas. We have a uh, deep devotion to Mary. And uh, many churches are with the title of Mary. Uh, and also, in many ways, uh, the uh, even folk Catholicism in the Philippines is prominent in terms of uh, outward uh, devotional processions, like uh, devotion to the Santo Nino, to uh, Jesus Nazareno, and also Christmas. We have the longest Christmas season, we are told, because even starting now, up to December, Filipinos already hear Christmas carols. But in many ways, this is also part of the uh, enthusiasm generated by that kind of Christianity. We also have in many ways, I think, uh, also um, adopted, uh, you might say, the reforms of Vatican II, and this is still a challenge for many of us. Also, how we can continue with uh, the reforms that especially now Pope Francis is calling for in terms of this synodal process, because uh, again, that is part of maybe the traditions we have to overcome now, the, uh, you might say the uh, decision making only made from the top or from the hierarchy. And now there should be a more uh, democratic listening to people at the grassroots. In fact, that has also been a learning experience here, as mentioned by earlier speakers that uh, for the first time, many local communities from the grassroots, from the parishes, have also engaged now in uh, sharing their own views on uh, what is to be done in the church. And it's also good for the parish priest and the bishop himself to listen to these comments. And recently we have also synthesized all of this at the national level. And now at the FABC level in Bangkok next month, the conferences of each country will also share the synodal uh, process results for the wider body to understand. And hopefully that will be the basis for a uh, overall document that we plan to come out with in terms of the future of the church in Asia, especially during this, uh, after the synodal process. So the synodal process is just the beginning, but it will be a continued pilgrimage and journey for greater evangelization. Thank you very much, Father Ledesma, for this orientation. And we hope that the 50 year anniversary of the FABC might also yeah, give more room to talk about these continuities and help to find new ways of transforming the way of how we want to be church together. May it be in, Asian, in Asia or even um, uh, in the universal church in general thank you very much for taking the time today to be with us 